Honorable Dr. MJ Dobbe. Right. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. In view of time constraints, I will simply say all protocol observed. Thank you. In view of time constraints, I rise here on behalf of Mkonto Esizwe, the party which I lead in Parliament, and the party of which was I rise here on behalf of Mkonto Esizwe, the party which I lead in Parliament, to respond to the speech that was made by the President last night. Our position is as follows. The establishment of the Government of National Unity is singularly a very cruel joke by the, Ram the Ramaphosa faction of the ANC and the Democratic Alliance perpetuated against the oppressed and downtrodden masses of our people. Our people are painfully aware that it would be impossible to create a united nation in South Africa unless the legacy of colonialism and apartheid was addressed. For a very long time, South Africans have been constituted by two nations, one black, poor, and economically disempowered and excluded, and the other white, rich, and in command of most of the means of production, material, and incorporeal resources and advantages of our society. These are not my words. These are the words of the former president, Thabo Mbegi. He uttered these words many years ago, and nothing has changed. Nothing has changed fundamentally since Thabo Mbegi made those remarks. My question to you, President, is this. Through what magic do you hope to forge a national unity of the oppressor and the oppressed, the exploiter and the exploited? <laughs> the rich capitalist and the rich and the, the rich capitalists and the toiling and exploited working class. Our position is very clear. When the ANC could not secure majority, it became desperate and the government, so-called government of national unity, was no more than a desperate and deliberate attempt to hold on to power. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Now, if the ANC formed the so-called government of national unity on the basis that it was the largest party, you ask yourself, why was that principle not extended to the province of KZN? It, it is a fact that it is a fact that Umkonto Esizwe won the province of KZN convincingly. We know that. That is a fact. That is a fact. Now, if there was if there was consistency in the principle that the party which has the largest majority one would have expected that to be done in KZN. The students of political science, Mr. President, will tell you a simple fact. You don't form a government of national unity when there is no crisis. A government of national unity can, is formed when there is a crisis. We had it in 1994 in this country. We had it in 1994 in this country because there was a crisis and we're emerging from apartheid. There is no crisis 
the only crisis is that the ANC has lost the majority. Now, we, we understand, we understand why the ANC has lost the majority. And you know it too. What I find striking is this. There were so many parties that campaigned openly against the ANC. There were many parties that said they will never work with the ANC. But when they were offered blue lights, they suddenly fell in love with the ANC. Quite frankly, I respect someone like Minister Gaitin McKenzie, whose views were always clear. He said he will work with any party, and he has been consistent in that regard. There are, there are parties here which campaigned against the ANC, but when the opportunity to be on the gravy train came, they went for it. The, the MK party is very clear. We are aware that your propagandists have been spreading the lie that a national unity government in South Africa could help deepen democracy because it means no one political party can impose its agenda on all and sundry. But we are not fools, Mr. President, we are not fools. It is very clear that the DA has a veto power in respect of the so-called government of national unity. The MK party was excluded and denied participation in the sellout GNU because we do not agree, because we do not agree with the ANC and the DA racist on many fronts. In our manifesto, we were loud and clear. I quote, the MK party is committed to transformative change across all sectors of South African society. Our policies are designed to address the most pressing challenges we face today. Order, order, honorable members. Can we all be in order and allow the speaker on the podium to proceed? I will go back to our manifesto. The MK party is committed to transformative change across all sectors of South African society. Our policies are designed to address the most pressing challenges we face today. Economic inequality, inadequate access to quality education and health care, national security threats, inequitable land distribution, and the need for robust traditional leadership and foreign policies that reflect our values and aspirations. Through our manifesto as the MK Party, we aim to lay down a clear path towards a more equitable, secure, and prosperous future for all South Africans. The resolution the restitution, rather, of land to black South Africans remains a yardstick against which sellout ANC and DA GNU government, against which your performance will be measured. Land has symbolic value to us. It means so much to us. As President Mandela once said in 1995, with freedom, and democracy came restoration of the right to land, and with it the opportunity to address the effects of centuries of dispossession and denial. In a similar vein, President Lutuli of the ANC once declared the following. He said, without land, there is no dignity. Our own president, Umsholozi, said the following. 
He said the following. Ink, 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 a zetu zata langu, the scat figure abam shop, kulen. Batata umchaba way to, batata numkebo way to, ba figure numteto abo, ba zenzela uno tandanji. Nam chanje asinam shab, nam chanje asinam uyo, konke watatu angesishu. Salwa siluela umchaba wetu. Asizanges belesu wanika abelu. At this point, I want to recognize our traditional leaders who are here as part of Mkonto with Caesar, because in Mkonto with Caesar, we believe that the land belongs to the nation and the land belongs to the people. <laughs> His Majesty, the King of the Khoi and the Sun people, Glen Taiposh. His Majesty, O King Talinjebu Madutu. His Majesty, O King Zweletum Tetwa, is here. And finally, our own president is a king, Kubabu Zuma. Yes, he is. Our position is very clear. Order. Our position is very Honorable clear. Honorable members. Honorable members. When we are heckling, we can do so without drowning the speaker. If we want to converse among ourselves, we can also do so without drowning the speaker. Can we please allow the speaker to proceed? Our position is very clear. Umkondo Esizo was formed because we believe that the ANC of Ramaphosa is not capable of delivery. It has failed this man. Order. It has failed the... Honorable Speaker, can you take a seat? Honorable Ndozi, what's the point of order? Thank you, Speaker. There are people in the House, Speaker, who are drowning. Speaker, we never disrupted anyone. Order, are, honorable members. I want to hear the point of order. What's the point of order, honorable Dozi? I'm saying that you are not protecting the speaker on the podium. He's been drowned. I've just done that. Because people are losing their heads here. Yeah, I don't know. Honorable you lost Dozi. Votes. Now you are losing your heads. Order. Listen to the order. honorable judge. Honorable Dozi. Discipline. Honorable Please, Dose, speaker, take your seat. Protect the take speaker on seat. the podium. Order, honorable members. When we make points of order, we do just that. We don't have a debate. Can we now ask Honorable Prophet to proceed with his speech? Can I proceed? Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and I'm going to proceed. Order. The Chief Whip of the GA, what's your point of order? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I believe during his point of order, the Honorable Ndlozi referred to the Speaker at the podium, the, the uh, leader of the opposition, as Judge Klope. I don't think that an impeached judge can be called a judge anymore. Thank you, Madam order. Speaker. Honorable members, honorable members, I have ruled, can we all be in order and allow the speaker on the podium to proceed? Honorable member, you have your point of order? Well, I'm not going to descend to that level. I've got honorable better speaker, titles. Honorable can you take your seat? Yes, honorable member, what's your point of order? Um, Shalunga Pambi. Yeah. I know what we are not uh, sitting there as a woman. We are not sitting there as a woman. We are not sitting there as a 
Am I raising the flag of Kumala? We will, we will respond with, with, with the way they are there. Order, honorable member. Order, honorable member. We have listened to Uchi, we pay your seat. Please take your seat. Please take your seat. Please listen to Uchi, we pay your seat. Please take your seat. Please listen to Uchi, we pay 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 your seat. Ose kongeni agwazi ukulum. Kwa tuwa nonge umase ni kuluma se ni kogozen. Aga zuwa zuti simuzwe. Na ati tinage esi mkasa wengi. Tala zuti sonke simlale. Kubega lume shon pegili. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mr. President, in 2022, the World Bank reported that inequality in South Africa gave South Africa an unfortunate uh, inequality in South Africa. South Africa is a country which has a problem to do with inequality. It, re it reported that 80% of the country's wealth was in the hands of 10% of the population. And it is the black population who factor most in the poorest category. The report places the blame for the income disparities directly on race. The legacy of colonialism and apartheid rooted in racial segregation continues to reinforce inequality in, in South Africa, the report stated. This is clear proof that the end of formal apartheid in 1994 did not end the real problems that we have in this country. And against that, I'm asking you, President, how are you hoping to sustain the so-called government of national unity when your interests are fundamentally and diametrically opposed in the so-called government of national unity? As the MK party, we are interested in genuine and real transformation of South Africa. This, ca this cannot simply mean having a nice, toothless constitution or so-called world's best constitution. We are not and can never be satisfied with our judges regurgitating Roman law, which was imported into this country through the genocidal force and forced down our throats. When when we were colonized, we had our own systems of justice in place. African customary law, which is close to our heart. Colonization brought with it a foreign legal system, Roman Dutch law. And this was done in order to protect and preserve the interests of those who colonize us. I challenge you to tell me a single country in Europe which is governed by African law. A single country in Europe which is governed by African law. If you can't tell me, why do we allow Roman Dutch law which does not reflect the views and the aspirations of the majority of the people in this country? Why do we allow there to be a system in place? Why? The conclusion is inescapable that that legal system is there to preserve the interests of the privileged white minority in South Africa at the expense of millions of poor black people that we represent in this parliament. It is our considered view that the speech that was delivered by the president yesterday fails on so many fronts. The president mentioned building infrastructure in rural areas. I don't know when that is going to start. He has never done it before. What would make us believe that he would suddenly now focus on rural areas as a priority? Why would he suddenly do that now? You have never done it before, Mr. President. It is our considered view that 
if we want to bring about fundamental changes, we need to invest in infrastructure, particularly in rural areas. Now the problem is where is money going to come from? Because we keep borrowing money every day, Mr. President. Our view is further that we need serious agrarian revolution in this country to turn things around in agriculture. We need agrarian revolution, which has been lacking. Rural areas in the main have not been taken seriously. Whilst, of course, the struggle continues for Section 25 of the Constitution to be amended. We are not apologetic about our stance. We remain firm. Section 25 of the Constitution must be amended. It is our considered view. Thank you. It must be amended to make provision for expropriation of land without compensation. That's the, that is the only way we can redress imbalances of the past and ensure that each and every South African has access to land in this country. Once, we, once there is access to land, so many of the problems that we have will be dealt with. For example, there will be no influx control. We all know people leave rural areas because they are not developed. They are poorly resourced. They leave rural areas, go to big cities like Cape Town, Devon, Johannesburg, looking for better opportunities. When they get there, there are no opportunities. But if land were to be restored to our people, they will be confined in those areas, provided they are developed. There will be no need for them to leave those areas and go to urban areas. <laughs> Furthermore, access to land will ensure that everybody has bread on the table. I know there are members in some of the parties who say there is Ingonyama Trust land, for example, in KZN, and that land is not being used. That is clearly a lie. People who live in those areas are not dependent on your 350 rand per month, Mr. President. <laughs> they are serious farmers. They practice subsistence farming in those areas. They are not dependent on your 350 rand for them to live. So we need to invest in agrarian revolution, make sure we turn things around. The other way of generating job, which is covered in our manifesto, we should reintroduce compulsory military training. That will absorb our young men and women who have no job and teach them to be disciplined. It will immediately turn things around. There is no question about it. We clearly need to reduce spending. It is very clear as a result of this bloated cabinet. It's all about blue lights. It's all about fancy cars. And you have forgotten the reason why you were elected, Mr. Ramaphosa, in the first place. We have forgotten the reasons. You have, you have to put it bluntly, you have sold out. We in the MK will continue to fight for Section 25 of the Constitution to be amended. We will continue to fight for the improvement of the quality of the life of our people, particularly those who live in, 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 uh, in rural areas who are by and large black, and I'm using the term black generically. Until those aspirations, we will continue to fight we will do it in a peaceful and lawful manner. There are parties here, some of them are in government, in the government of national unity. Some, I've had some people, ministers, advocating the death penalty. That is unconstitutional, and nobody has said they are acting unconstitutional. 
the death penalty was outlawed in this country way back in 1995. Now to find a cabinet minister advocating death penalty without the constitution being amended is ridiculous. Where we come from in the MK party, we will continue to act within the law, and it is our right as politicians to act within the law so that the law can be changed so that it will benefit the majority of the people in this country. <laughs> Until such time that Africa and Africans are free, the struggle will continue and insulting us and howling at us and or pretending that we are talking nonsense is not going to help. As long as the question, as long as the question of land is not being addressed in this country. We, as long as the question of land is not being addressed seriously, as long as we are being ridiculed, we will continue to fight. That is why, for example, we are challenging these elections results because they were rigged. They were rigged. We know, we know as a fact that we won certainly co convincingly, even in KZN, we know that as a fact our results our votes were stolen and given to certain people who are now comfortably. We will continue with the fight until such time that we get our land back. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Sir Nason. Honorable Sir Nason. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you for that wonderfully warm welcome from the Hardy Dar benches. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Speaker, Mr. President, for far too long, our country's enormous potential has been held up and held captive by political forces that seek to break down rather than to build order, up. Order, honorable members. Order, honorable speaker. Honorable Lozzi, what's the point of order? What is the point of order? Sorry, speaker, I was switching on the mic. No, I wanted to speak respectfully to address this honorable member with his rightful title as a matriculant, seeing that there are order, confusions of titles today. Honorable this is a judge. Honorable now Lose. you have a matriculant. Honorable Lose. Honorable members. Order. Honorable members, you have just been into an induction after your election. You were advised what are the points of orders, what are the rules, and it's very disappointing that some of you are doing exactly the opposite. Honorable Ndlozi, you know that was not a point of order, and it's actually spurious. Order, Honorable Stenez, and can you proceed? Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I think that the grannies and the pensioners and the stockfells who had their money stolen from them at VBS don't sleep any better knowing that the people who stole from them have doctorates and master's degrees. You see, time and time again, they've used populist politics and racial rhetoric to break down any attempt at building a consensus over the growth-enhancing reforms that our economy so desperately needs. They have done so deliberately because it is only by sowing division and preventing reform that they can keep institutions weak keep the taps of corruption flowing, and stay out of jail for their many misdeeds. For far too long, we've allowed those who seek to break our country down 
for their own personal benefit and gain, to hold back the builders who yearn for a South Africa with a growing economy that creates millions of new jobs. But the 2024 election, where the people of South Africa chose a new path by not giving any party a majority and forcing us to create a multi-party government, offers us the most important opportunity and the most powerful opportunity in recent history to overcome the suffocating grip that the breakers have held on our economy and society. The government of national unity is South Africa's chance to free itself from populism, division, and economic decline. This is our opportunity now to build South Africa into the prosperous country that we know it can be together. And that is exactly what the Democratic Alliance is going to do in government. We are in this government of national unity because we have said loud and clear that we want to build South Africa. We don't want to break South Africa. Last night, the president said, and I quote, the government of national unity will pursue every action that contributes to sustainable, rapid economic growth and remove every obstacle that stands in the way of growth, unquote. In all of the portfolios where the DA is represented, both in the executive and in parliament, we're already moving with speed to do exactly that. We have proudly answered the call, Mr. President, to serve South Africa first. And, Mr. President, the DA's weaver birds are already eagerly at work. In agriculture, we are building a South Africa by partnering with the private sector to enhance biosecurity, extension services, international trade, and to turn the agricultural sector into an engine room of economic growth and job creation. In public works and infrastructure, we're exposing corruption and building the foundation to turn South Africa into a giant construction site that grows our economy. At Home Affairs, we are tackling the visa backlog that you referred to, Mr. President, and reforming the system to bring in the valuable skills we desperately need to build our country. In forestry, fisheries, and environment, we are unlocking funding to get the Just Economic Tra Energy Transition Partnership to build the industries of the future. In basic education, we are restoring the dignity of our children by reducing pit toilets and building the skills of tomorrow. <laughs> and in communications and digital technologies, we're building a new digital ecosystem to drive the modernization and digital transformation of our society. But it doesn't end there. In finance, trade and industry, energy, higher education, small business development, and water and sanitation, DA deputy ministers are also helping to weave the reforms that we need to grow our economy. In Parliament, the DA weaver birds are just as busy helping to build the home that we all want. Our portfolio committee chairs are going to drive reforms through the legislature to ensure that we remove all legislative obstacles that stand in the way of unleashing the growth that our country needs. Mr. President, the recent cabinet Lakotla that you convened has given us Honourable the key ingredients. Honourable Mr. Nathan, can you take your seat? Honourable Member, what's your point of order? Madam Speaker, I, I'm Vispan Reddy from Mkonto Rasiz, where party. I rise in terms of Rule 81, and I seek your guidance, Madam Speaker, in terms of the speaker's list. The speaker that's on the podium currently, is he speaking on behalf of the DA or as the Minister of Agriculture? Thank Honourable you. Honourable Member, 
that is not the point of order. The speakers list, the members of the executive also belong to their parties. So that's not a point of order. Honorable member, you can proceed. Honorable Stenison, you can proceed. He may be ready, but I'm able. <laughs> The Government of National Unity has identified the apex priorities to unleash rapid and inclusive economic growth, to create jobs as our apex priority. To achieve this, we have identified and committed to a responsible fiscal path that reduces the national debt in order to free up more money and resources for productive investments. The planned review of the sectoral master plans to identify obstacles to growth emphasize and focus on our need for exports, slashing red tape, crowding in private sector investment, and these are the key ingredients that we need. We welcome the interventions to expand the basket of VAT-free goods so that we can put food on the tables of more South Africans at a cheaper price. Specialized policing units to fight violent crime and the construction mafias. These policy changes are some that the DA has long advocated for, and we believe they will make a meaningful impact on our people. Now, while the government of national unity has met the requirement for sufficient consensus outlined in the statement of intent, some key matters of economic policy and other issues around how we deal with problems going forward, it, import it is important to acknowledge that there are still some areas of divergence that require attention. This is a natural feature of any multi-party government anywhere in the world. For example, the need for universal access to basic health care for every citizen, regardless of the economic status, is important. And there are some discussions going on about the best way to achieve that, to ensure that we can fast track it. The same goes for the Basic Education Laws Amendment Bill. However, in all of these areas of divergence, which are natural when you bring 10 parties together. I am convinced that we can find a way forward. It will be requiring us to be honest and diligent about where these differences exist and to work in good faith with each other, one another to find solutions in the best interests of all of the people of South Africa. Honorable Speaker, if this government of national unity succeeds in delivering on its apex priority of growing the economy and creating jobs, then the builders will defeat the breakers once and for all. And this is because if we rapidly expand growth and job creation, we will diffuse the populist tinderbox that the breakers continuously exploit for their own gain. Let me tell you right now that the single greatest fear of the breakers in this house is that the government of national unity succeeds in growing the economy and making South Africa a better place. The greatest fear of the breakers is not that South Africa fails. It'll suit them just fine. If the country goes up in smoke, it'll fuel the politics of division and hatred upon which they thrive. No, the breakers' greatest fear is that South Africa succeeds and our people prosper. Because if that happens, it will destroy the foundation upon which the breakers have built their ugly politics of resentment and populism. But the choice between building and breaking is not ours alone. The creation of the government of national unity means that every South African now stands before an important choice. Who wants to be a builder rather than a breaker? And we need those citizens who want to be builders to strengthen the government of national unity's hand. To be clear, the government of national unity will not be a kumbaya chorus. No multi-party government ever is. And if you've seen successful weaver's nests, you will know quite clearly that things do get noisy from time to time. But this GNU represents the broad interests. And the truth is, that the builders in our society have to make this government work 
because the parties who sit on the opposite side of the GNU want to break South Africa beyond all repair through their looting, their populism, their Gupta selling out, their VBS looting, and their violence. And so, and so to every South African, I say now is a time for the choosing. Are you a builder or are you a breaker? Order, honourable members, what is your point of order? No, Chair. Uh, let me just clarify it uh, first on your, on your table. Is that a point it's, of no, order? No, no, it's not a point of order. What is the point? Let me, order. Uh, I just want to check if uh, Mr. Steen Hazen, does he really understand what he's saying? Honourable member, that's not the point of order. Thank you very much. Honourable Steen Hazen, can you proceed? Honourable Senezen, can you proceed with the speech? When you drive north from here, you will find a magical part of South Africa known as the Kalahari. When you get there, you know that the most successful weaver nests are the ones where as many birds as possible work as hard as possible to build and protect their shared home. And whenever they see a boomslang coming in there to try and steal the eggs, they work together to sound the alarm and protect their home. And so it must be for South Africa. To the breakers, to them I simply say that even the wiliest boomslang doesn't stand a chance when 60 million weaver birds unite to build and defend the home that we love. And that is exactly what South Africa must do now. South Africa, are you a builder? or are you a breaker? Order. Thank you very much.